What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. I want to start the show on a little bit of a lighter note. You know, usually we come in, you know, guns a blazing on the politics and the disastrous administration we have in the office right now. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit. So a missing pig named Kevin Bacon is finally found. Thanks to the real Kevin Bacon. (laughs) I found this story quite interesting, actually. I don't know why. It's kind of weird. So in a bit of fun Hollywood twist, a family finally got back to their runaway pig, aptly named Kevin Bacon. (laughs) And guess who pitched in to help? Yep, the real Kevin Bacon himself. This pig, ironically sharing a name that's got to make you think twice about its fate, had been hoofing it away from his Pennsylvania home for a solid two weeks, leaving his owners pretty worried, before Kevin stepped in and helped bring the little piggy home. (laughs) <laughs> it's awesome. So Chelsea Rumball of Cumberland Township, Pennsylvania, brought the cheekily named pig home to her farm on October 13th. Rumball explained that it wasn't long until the pig took off on his two-week adventure. Quote, we're so close to the pig, my 16-year-old was petting him. Rumball explained on a Facebook group she set up called Bring Kevin Bacon Home. He stayed close, but eventually took off into the woods. Hearing of this story and the plight of the family, the actor, Kevin Bacon, helped spread the word of the missing pig and shared a story about it on his thread page. He also captioned his thread post, Bring Kevin Bacon Home. Thankfully, after multiple failed humane traps and food trails, the adventurous Kevin Bacon was taken down, you ready for this, by a honey bun that contained pet-safe Benadryl. (laughs) It's great, man. So after consuming the treat, Rumball told local media the pig simply walked back into his pen without so much as a fuss, I bet. To prevent future breakouts, she also explained the family has reinforced the pig's pen with concrete below the ground to stop him tunneling his way out. The family also seemed to have big plans for Kevin Bacon's future now that he has gotten over his wild adventurous phase. Quote, I do think he has a life of stardom ahead of him, said Rumball. We're all for a happy ending, so it's great to hear Kevin Bacon, the pig, is back with his family. And hats off to the human Kevin Bacon, too, for stepping up and lending a hand to his namesake. Pretty cool. I I just, I don't know why. Sometimes, you know, something that I've really been noticing from a lot of people out there is we we hit these stages in our in our politics, within our government. I think the American people are just so exhausted. They're exhausted. They're exhausted with politics. They're exhausted with how bad this administration is. I mean, for Republicans anyways, of just losing all the time. And it's 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 really unfortunate. And I think we get to a point that we're just so demoralized and people just they just don't want to deal with it anymore. I've I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that have either deleted their social media or say that they have taken a break from social media. And, you know, some people I hear, they're not even too excited to go vote. And I think it's on purpose. A lot of it's because, you know, I feel like the Biden administration has been nothing but three years of of, of just a demoralization campaign, honestly. I mean, it's just so demoralizing how bad this administration is and and how it could just get everything so wrong all the time. You know, not a little wrong, but a lot of wrong. Like every single thing it does is wrong. And, you know, so it's demoralizing to people when they constantly hear about losing all the time. Like, oh, you know, people just don't want to talk about it anymore. And I get it. But people need to make sure we got to stay in the fight, man. The headliner for my podcast is called Never Give Up and Never Surrender. Ever. Never give up to these people. Never surrender. That's exactly what they want. They want you to be demoralized. I I totally get it. I get demoralized too sometimes. It's just like, what's the point? You know what I mean? When you're scrolling through news articles and you see articles like this, the U.S. House votes with eight Republicans voting with Democrats to shelve the impeachment of DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. The guy that is overseeing the worst border disaster that this country has ever seen. And yet we can't get eight Republicans to get on board with impeaching the guy. Like, I think people are just, they're exhausted of the establishment. They're just so sick of it. 
They're so sick of this machine that Donald Trump pulled the curtain back on. And people seen it, maybe to their own detriment. It's, it's almost like we're living in the matrix where you have some people that were perfectly fine living in the matrix. The ignorance is bliss. And then you have other people that seen it and now they can't go back. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but people need to know that the truth shall set you free. We had to know what is going on in our establishment. And I know everyone kind of knew what was going on. Everybody knew that there was a Washington bureaucracy that was calling all the shots, pulling all the strings. It wasn't some elected official. It wasn't some senator or some congressperson or even the president. It was this group of people that have been in Washington president after president after president, and they essentially are the ones that are running this country. They're the ones calling the shots, and people always knew that was the case. But the problem people have now is that now it's really starting to affect them. Now you're messing with their money, man. Now you're messing with their lives. And people that are going through hardships, people that are desperate, they don't want to sit there and look at a Washington establishment that's flourishing in prosperity. They just don't want to. And, and this, is where, this is where we have problems. You know, I, I was talking to somebody, a fellow colleague of mine. I won't mention his name because I don't know if he wants me to mention his name on the show or not. Uh, a lot of people don't. So we were talking about it. And he's like, you know, years ago, it's like we all knew that there was corruption in the Washington swamp. You know, it's like we all knew that there was you know, money being skimmed off the top of certain deals, that there was bills that were stuffed with, with pork. We all knew that there was deals being made in the Washington swamp. But it was like, you know what? I don't care. Just so long as, you know, inflation's down, just so long as the border is secure. Hell, just so long as the country's keeping me safe and taking care of us. I don't care. You know, Senator takes a little bit off the top here, a little bit off the top there. Some science nerd gets a gets a grant for two million dollars. You know, who cares? It happens. You know, that's what's going to happen when you're spending trillions of dollars of money. Right. But now now it's like, whoa, now, wait a minute. Now, my gas is four dollars a gallon. The interest rates are high. Inflation's eight percent. Groceries cost three times more. You know, we got wars popping off overseas. We got 10 million illegal immigrants in the country. Things aren't looking so good. And now the same people that were kind of looking the other way, giving a little wink and a nod to the people cut money off the top. Now they're like, hey, look, you know, you've been you've been skimming money off the top for a long time and we looked the other way. But now we got some issues. You know, we got some questions now and and you're going to be you're going to be giving us some answers because what are you doing? And the problem is, is the establishment wants nothing to do with helping anybody. They really don't, folks. These people in the Washington bureaucracy, they hate you. Literally, they hate you. The media hates you. These people wish they just had this system, this club that they created for themselves. They just wish you would just ignore it and just look the other way and just allow the beatings to continue. And they wish you would just be happy about it. That's all. They are pissed off that you found out. They're pissed off at Donald Trump and they want to destroy him because he exposed the entire corrupt establishment. And so people get demoralized when it's just one loss after another, after another, after another. Like I said, for this, why do we have eight Republicans voting with Democrats to shelve the impeachment of Mayorkas, who is supposed to be securing our southern border, but is allowing tens of millions of illegal immigrants into this country on purpose? It's not on accident. It's on purpose. Why? Why do Republicans constantly do this? Democrats don't do this. So the House voted on Monday night on Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene's articles of impeachment against Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. As the Gateway Pundit reported, Greene introduced the resolution following a tragic incident in which two of her constituents were killed by human traffickers near the border. These deaths and many more are the results of Biden and Mayorkas' failure to control the border and prevent the entry of terrorists human traffickers, drugs, and other contraband into the United States. The resolution to impeach Mayorkas cites a long, long list of evidence, enough to fit on six pages of Mayorkas' failures as DHS secretary. 
Under Mayorkas, the U.S. southern border has remained wide open for three years. Nearly 10 million illegal aliens have walked across the open border and allowed into the United States. This is the purposeful destruction of America. This legislation is damning. There is no way that any U.S. representative who loves this country could allow this deranged man to continue as DHS secretary. And eight Republicans voted with Democrats to save Mayorkas from being fired. Thirteen Republicans refused to vote on the resolution. And what we're going to do on this show is we're giving out names. That's absolutely right. That's what we're going to do. We're going to give out names and we're going to give out a phone number on this show. Because if these are your representatives, you need to call these eight Republicans and you need to ask them, why the hell are you not voting to impeach the guy that is purposely unsecuring our border and allowing tens of millions of illegals in here, the flood of fentanyl that's killing hundreds of thousands of Americans? This guy is overseeing one of the worst border disasters in in U.S. history, but he doesn't deserve impeachment. This is the problem with our party. These people get to do this over and over and over again, and there's no accountability. Until now. So first, we got Patrick McHenry, North Carolina. And to think they actually wanted this guy to be House Speaker. You guys remember that? They tried doing like a power share between Democrats and Republicans before Mike Johnson to give it to Patrick McHenry, the acting uh, Speaker of the House. Now we all know we dodged a bullet with that one. So Patrick McHenry from North Carolina, Tom McClintock from California, no surprise there, Virginia Fox from North Carolina, Daryl Issa from California, Cliff Bentz from Oregon, Ken Buck, this guy Ken Buck, man, Ken Buck from Colorado, Mike Turner from Ohio, and John Durte from California. Folks, we got a big problem in our party. We have a big problem in this country in general, is we lack moral standing. We lack courage. Courage is contagious. But in the eyes of these eight people, courage is just something that could be bypassed. It's why do we have a party where our own Republican members hate us? They hate their party. They don't want to be a part of this. Like, why do we have Republicans that vote with Democrats? Why even have a two party system if one of the parties is just going to be controlled opposition? And the only reason we are controlled opposition is because of people just like this. These eight representatives right here. And so this is what's demoralizing to people. That's why I wanted to start the show off with Kevin Bacon, the pig that was found by the real Kevin Bacon. (laughs) Because people are just tired of it, man. They're sick of the establishment. They feel demoralized because no matter what they do, they're always getting kicked in the teeth. And it is, and, and it just seems like you're just in a hamster wheel running really, really fast and that there's always somebody there. And it's usually these Republican establishment swamp creatures that just, they put a stick in the spokes, man. It's so disappointing all the time is what it is. I think people are just tired of being disappointed and I don't blame them. I really don't. So once again, House Republicans let us down. (laughs) 